porpoises or how many monkeys or koala bears or any four-legged creature you see in the room today. Maybe a few flies. This if you give class in India, there's a few flies here and there. And if you go to um, uh, 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 Shilaguri, they always have the birds coming in. Shilaguri is a very big temple on the border there. All kinds of birds sitting there for class. Maybe they're, you know, previous devotees who didn't take it so process so seriously, so they come back to here. <laughs> like this. So in this way, we sometimes can take for granted the, the power of the process. And, and we look at the, the, uh, the quality of devotion the gopis would have. The mystic yogis are sitting there performing great tapasya, putra swaha. Agni Swaha, Oh again. You like the, I'm trying to present so much presentation. Oblations, oblations, Swaha, Swaha. But this is more or less a relationship in more awe and reverence. Is Krishna and, and in their mantras they're telling Krishna, come, come, come. But what are the gopis doing? They're simply doing their they're simply absorbing themselves in Krishna and and and, and milking the cows and, and pricking up the Gover, dung from the forest, and meditation on Krishna. And guess who's coming, you know, coming around? Um, can I have some chach, some buttermilk? Can I have some yogurt? Oh, no, no, you, you dance first. This is, this is the level of the gopis. The other yogis and sages are pouring oblations into the fire. But the gopis, hey, wait, you dance a little bit, then we'll give you some chach. Well, you do, do some seva. We'll, you, we'll give you the toy, you have to chant the right name. <laughs> so in this way, we see how Krishna is completely controlled by his intimate devotees. So on our plane of existence, we can see that that uh, this principle, Rake Krishna Marike, Marai Krishna Rake, that in our service there is so much protection. And if Krishna wants to save me, no one can harm me. If Krishna wants to uh, kill me, then what can I do? No one can, no one, uh, can save me in this way. I remember when I was doing a, a Sangatan van, we were in um, Colorado. Oh, it's good Sangatan story, story, you know. And uh, I took over driving in the middle of the night. It's very cold, so there's black ice on the road. And uh, all goes, always wear your seatbelt. So I had my seatbelt on. And uh, a big semi truck was coming, and I was turning the corner. All of a sudden, the van just made a full 360, and the lights are coming closer and closer, and it just oh, Krishna! And then the van somehow or another went off the side of the road and flipped about three times. Now, don't forget when you're driving a Sangha today, there's always two people. I'm in the front seat, but there was one boy named Shuddha Das in the back. You know, we had these bins. And all the cooking paraphernalia goes in one bin, and then all your book books go in the other bin. And then you, you'll you sleep on both top of the bins like that. So figure a van, like a washing machine, three times. <laughs> and uh, it was amazing, because I'm sitting there, and it was just, it was, it was, it was like, it was just like, you know, time to stop. So it wasn't like, oh no, I'm going to die. You know, not like that. It was just, it was just Hare Krishna. The roof's getting closer and closer to my head. But it was just like Krishna, within the intelligence, don't worry, it's not time yet. So then you can kind of like, like a you know, like sankirtan, you're like, or being a manager, you're watching things happen, you know. The roof's getting closer and closer. And then Shraddha is actually, been, all the books went in one, another bit. And all the cooking crap for that one, the other bin, is that amazing? Everything was mystical, how it all worked. Who came from that island? Well, maybe the Krishna wants the books on this side. No. So then, uh, <laughs> but Shraddha was somewhere mixed in between amongst all the pots and pans and, uh, you know, the cushions and uh, dojo paraphernalia. No, I'm joking. But uh, so in this way, uh, <laughs> the, uh, it was a sense that Krishna gives revelation about. Uh, how to pass the tests in life. So we can learn. We are in the uh, schoolhouse of uh, learning of how to become dear. How to see the different levels of purity amongst those who are around us. The Prabhupada says, you look around, you never know who you're sitting next to. Could be Narada Muni. So there's different levels of purity, different gradations. But of course, you remember the example of uh, um, Lord Ramachandra 
Hanum and the, the spider. The spider is pushing grains of sand. But Lord Ramachandra is, you know, is saying the Hanuman tries to push him out of the way, the spider. But no, uh, that uh, Lord Ramachandra says, no, I see your devotion equally. So we have different levels, different devotees here, different degrees of purity, different expertise in different fields. But ultimately, what is most attractive to Krishna is that bhav of surrender, that sentiment of devotion in the heart. So in other words, you may be an expert in this field or that field. You're suddenly very paka. You may have not missed a Mongol RT your entire life. Of course, anyone who's doing that for an entire life has got some bob. But the point being is that if you perform all your sadhanas and all your marathons and all your trips to Vrindavan, wherever it may be, any aspect of devotional service, and you do not have an increase of loving sentiment towards the Lord, everything is useless. It is all broken glass because you haven't learned the principle of increasing one's love for the Supreme. Of course, ultimately, if someone, even following the process of Vaidhi Bhakti, ultimately for one's own purification and for the purification of others, in time, if you maintain that stance, at least that, then that love, that develop, will, 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 that uh, attraction will develop. You can't just come here year after year after year. Because otherwise, uh, you become attached towards external delights. And that's one sad feature is when devotees uh, make mistakes in terms of they stop the good habits. Because see, the good habits are more difficult to break than the bad habits. But when they get absorbed, because ultimately as jiva we need ras, we need some relation. So ultimately, either it's the prapshipatmaka or avaranatmaka experience. Either we uh, go for the spiritual side, or we'll be covered over and thrown into various interests, various desires, various bodies. So it's sad, actually, when anyone leaves the society of devotees, because you have no barometer. There's no barometer of how to come to the mark, how to come to the standard. So in this way, we want to very much lock on to the position we have so we can make spiritual progression. And then we will begin to see the different devotees around us, different abilities, different um, contributions. But again, it's a matter of purity of heart. For a sannyasi, whose samskara is to become a sannyasi, our, uh, it means to surrender to Krishna 100%. Then a grihasta, a working person, may be only able to surrender 15% of their time to the public service or coming to a temple like that. But because if they have a Krishna conscious ashram, putting Krishna in the center and have a wife and family to have a husband like this, then the end result, if, if the quality is there in that 10%, 50% of the time, if the end result is the same as 100% for sannyasi. So it's all a matter towards our positioning it. And uh, we can see the spider is pushing grains of sand, but the point is it's seen qualitatively equal in the eyes of the Lord. So when we study the beauty of simplicity, arjavam, that we can understand that this is an important, essential principle, as is described in the 13th chapter, that a devotee must become fearless, must engage in purification of existence, study of the scriptures, or we'll engage in charity, but have the quality of simplicity. In verse, uh, chapter 13, verse 8, where the different qualities of devotion, uh, devotion are delineated, that um, it's described ultimately how there is a purification of heart, a purity, tolerance, austerity. But again, this principle of simplicity which must be there. So in this way, if we study how, um, even as we may note, how simplicity um, can have such a wonderful attraction, and I'll close because I just noticed the time, that um, in the son of Brahmana, who was uh, ordered by his guru, you read Bhagavad Gita every single day. And he read the Gita, but he was illiterate. He could not read. 